Occasionally there's a Linux distro that comes along and makes you go, what? And if you like those sorts of things, Linux FX is for you. The internal name is actually Windows FX, but of course they can't use a name like that. So of course this distro is designed to be similar to another popular OS, but we've seen that tried before and it sucked. Do any of you remember Linspire and Lindos.com? So the installer itself seems to be Calamares, but what's up with this panel in this blue color? Like they're already reusing most of Windows' color scheme, so why wouldn't they use it in the installer? It's just, it looks so out of place. The installer itself is pretty run of the mill, but the actual install portion where it's like copying and installing all of the files and stuff appeared to show ads with these strange creatures and some sort of facial recognition technology. It's very strange, let alone on a Linux distribution to be promoting this sort of thing. Now the login screen is LightDM, I think. It's reusing that familiar Windows branding, which is honestly a little strange. And the desktop, we're greeted with that weird little welcome app again. Yes, this is supposed to be Cortana, or I guess supposed to be maybe inspired by Cortana, but it's called Helloa. And as far as I can tell, all it really does is prompt you to install driver updates and things like that. It's an app that launches apps. That's seemingly it. And all other windows spawned from the Helloa app are child processes that block the parent process. This is a theme across all of the Linux FX apps, actually. So this desktop is obviously based and designed to look like Windows 10, but you probably already know that just by looking at it. But while we're poking at the panel, let's go ahead and set up the Bluetooth. It was easy enough, my phone connected without much fuss, but I didn't see any integration with the desktop at all. Not media or file sharing anyways, I could hotspot my device and share its network, so that's cool. Obviously the built-in widgets are designed to look like Windows 10 widgets, and that goes for all of the system apps, uh, task manager, file manager, and all that. But what's that big red square eyesore down there? Well, that's any desk, obviously. It didn't open right away though, I clicked it a few times because I didn't know what was going on, it opened like three instances of it, but it's a remote desktop app, and remote access is enabled by default too. Kinda creepy, no clue why they ship this by default, but okay. So while we have the file manager up here, let's go ahead and look at the networking stuff. Looks like all my computers were detected on the network, which is awesome. And file sharing seems to be really easy to set up from the context menu in the file manager itself, which is fantastic. Printer stuff worked good too. My printer was automatically discovered and installed, which is exactly what I would expect. And updates can be had through the Helloa app or the update applet in the panel. And after the system is updated, we'll land back at the desktop where we can open a terminal and see that Linux FX weighs in at about 11 gigabytes, and the desktop here is using just under 760 megabytes of memory. And just for funsies, we'll take a look at NeoFetch and see the Windows Vista era logo, along with the official unofficial name, Windows FX 10. We've got kernel version 5.6.15 with 2,740 DPKG packages installed, bash 5.0. This desktop is cinnamon with mutter and a very custom theme called Linux FX-10. So yeah, this is the cinnamon desktop we're looking at here. I've seen KDE and XFCE style to look like Windows clones, but I don't think I've ever seen cinnamon do it before. There are additional themes and tweaks, but it's really designed to look and feel like Windows 10. Which is a bit of a shame, because I personally don't think Windows 10 is the best looking Windows. That award goes to Windows XP Media Center Edition. That being said though, the meat and potatoes of Windows FX is not the theme. Let me introduce you to Windows FX Settings, aka the control panel from Windows. So this tool is pretty amazing because it made me realize how many useful system tools Linux is lacking. Let's take the system information section as an example. This is practically identical to the same thing that Windows has had since like Windows XP. It clearly lays out all of the system information, including hardware on a single screen in a way that even gray muzzles can understand. The closest thing I can think of this on Linux is like K Info Center. And even that's too verbose and it requires multiple clicks to see everything. Not every single thing here is a Windows settings clone though. The customization screen is definitely similar to Windows, but eh, I think you'd be hard pressed to make a Linux desktop as restricted and inflexible as the Windows desktop. 
but the Windows FX settings app can also handle your updates. But not quite like Windows 10. In fact, I couldn't get it to update at all, so I'm not sure if this is broken or what's going on. So for the media stuff, everything worked. Every single thing from archives to music to video, all of it just worked without a single issue. Some of the audio files opened with video player, but oh well, it worked. In the way of apps, all of my app images seem to work just fine, but if you've heard anything about Windows or Linux FX or whatever they call it, you'll know that it has seamless Windows application support. Now that doesn't mean that all Windows apps are gonna work out of the box, but it does mean that you can click them and interact with them as you would on Windows itself. Most Linux desktops act all stupid if you double click an EXE file, but Windows FX loads it up through Wine, and for the most part, it just works. The three Windows apps I tested were Steam, Battle.net, and Origin. Guess which one of them didn't work? Well, okay, actually I ran into a little trouble with Steam because the default Wine prefix that it chose was Windows XP, which is, I mean, let's be honest here, it's pretty damn old and not all software runs on it. The app that didn't work at all though was, yeah, you guessed it, it was Origin. That's not Linux FX's problem though, that's EA's fault for using weird, stupid, cute stuff that isn't well supported on Linux or Wine, let alone on Windows half the time. Flatpaks were recognized by the Software Center, but not supported out of the box. Snaps were though, and it looks like the Software Center might be a fork of Ubuntu's Software Center since I'm seeing some snaps here on the main page. And Steam is installed by default, but not through the repos, so like a user could accidentally install it again through the Steam installer, which probably wouldn't be good. And speaking of apps, the default app selection is just crazy. There is so much stuff going on in here, I can't even fast forward to cover it all but there is a ton of software pre-installed here, for better or worse. So I wanted to test some games that really tax my system's performance and games that would make good comparison tests if I could ever coax Windows 10 to come on the show. We've got Deus Ex, Mankind Divided here, and this is a game that runs notoriously poorly on Linux despite it being a native port, and you can see from Mango HUD, it's using as much as my GPU as it can. On Linux, it's using OpenGL, and the frame rate is mostly okay until you find yourself in a firefight, which is kind of where you need stable frame rates the most. It's probably playable here on the medium graphics preset, but you would maybe might want to turn it down to get stable frame rates throughout. And the next game up is Overwatch. Well, it's an Overwatch replay because, again, if I ever compare it against Windows, I can use this replay side by side in the same spot in the same match to get a fair comparison. Overwatch is of course a Windows exclusive game, but it runs pretty much perfectly on Linux thanks to DXVK, so this uses Vulkan instead of OpenGL. The frame rate was okay, not great, but not as variable as Deus Ex, and it's still very playable in my opinion with the graphics on the medium preset. And at last we've got GTA 5, another Windows exclusive running on Linux with DXVK, so Vulkan. It ran about as well as normal, like as it normally does on Linux distributions. It did stutter from time to time, but it really made me appreciate just how well GTA ran on Bodhi, which got almost 60 frames a second pretty much the whole time. Here we're averaging probably about 30 to 40 frames a second, depending on what's happening in the scene. So Windows FX or Linux FX, whatever, is an interesting experiment that should have happened, oh, I don't know, five or six years ago. Why has it taken so long to make such a good clone of a Windows desktop is beyond me. And when I say good, I don't mean like, like quantifiably good. I mean looks wise. Honestly, the desktop didn't feel very good at all. And once app indicators were like you install stuff and more indicators flood the panel, it just looks bad. Admittedly, I'm not a huge fan of the Windows 10 look to begin with but Linux FX is definitely worse than stock Windows 10, in my opinion. But the thing that really stuck out to me was the Windows-esque tooling, like all around the control panel and settings stuff. See, in Linux land, there's usually a one-to-one -one relationship for tools and functionality, so you've got one tool that does exactly one job. This can make a cluttered and even incoherent workspace, especially for new users. Windows tools are generally the exact opposite. There's one big giant control center to rule all of the controls. Is that better? Well, maybe to some people. The people that hark on the Unix philosophy seem to conveniently forget that the Linux credo is one of freedom and choice. You shouldn't bash on other people for wanting to use what they want to use. It's their choice and their expression. 
For some people, one big giant control panel is better than the antiquated Unix philosophy of having one tool for one atomic job. That being said, many of the features in the Windows control panel and special tools aren't available on Linux like at all. The closest thing I can think of is probably Yast, and Yast is anything but user friendly. I mean, these tools are available, they're just sometimes CLI tools, or open a config file and make a change or something, which is fine for most of us, but people who aren't used to that workflow, it's, it's just going to freak them out, they're not going to have a good time. I look at Linux FX as a proof of concept or a prototype of what the traditional Linux desktop is missing. In my opinion, a Windows desktop clone shouldn't be more functional than a standard Linux desktop, and after using it, Honestly, I'm seeing that's not the case. If anything, Linux FX has shown me that the Linux desktop, in this day and age, still has more growing to do. Still.